Hi, welcome into Truth by Light. I'm Kevin Anderson, student minister here at Parker Memorial. So glad you could tune in with us today. Today's lesson is called Little Foxes, and it is out of the book of Song of Solomon, or the Hebrew would have that, the Song of Songs, uh, which simply means the greatest song. And I want to start by saying that when someone, when he, a man, woman, boy, or girl surrenders their life to Christ, a new management system takes over and getting used to that takes time and it takes devotion to God's word, which every day reminds me that I am now being led by the Holy Spirit and I'm no longer on the throne of my life, but God is through the presence of the Holy Spirit. God's people are challenged to live according to God's wisdom, to not our own. And that's sometimes the biggest fight that we face because we sometimes want to say, well, God, um, I think I know better. I think I've got this. So uh, take a break for today and let me take care of this. And we find ourselves in trouble. But as we're told in the word of God in James 3, 17, but the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. That is James 3.17. And we're also told in the word of God that our fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom for us. All that comes to play. And of course, one very important piece of God's wisdom has to do with you and I learning to wait for the Lord and to live a life of obedience unto the Lord. And when we practice that, we will see God's pattern of giving the best to his children. Now, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes at first with, with each episode, I may not perceive it as being God's absolute best for me, but down the road, I will understand. And I, I think we'll even come to agreement that, yeah, God, you knew what you were doing. Have you ever had to say that uh, later on after a situation took place, you kind of wrestled with God, but then you had to succumb to the fact that God is in charge and he did know best. You know, I, I'm, I've learned in my life that the word good is in front of the word by for a reason. There's a such thing as beneficial goodbyes. And sometimes God wants to move you away from maybe a group of people for a season so that he can teach us something. And we wrestle sometimes with that. And sometimes we may not think that's a good idea, but when we get through it and come, come beyond that moment uh, of learning, we can say, God, you knew what you were doing the whole time. So Solomon is the one God said was the wisest of all, because whenever he was asked by God, Solomon, what can I bless you with? And Solomon could have said anything, but he said, I want your wisdom. And so God said, that is the wisest thing anybody has ever asked. So I'm going to bless you with that. Now, Solomon, and we give a little history here. He is King David's son. And of course, he assumed the throne once David's life was over. Solomon, much like his father, loved music. He loved poetry. And we're told in the book of 1 Kings that Solomon wrote a thousand and five songs. He was quite into music. And what uh, I want to ask you something today to think about this. Go back in time. What love song uh, has deep meaning for you? Uh, when I think about that, there are many songs that come to mind. And a lot of love songs from my high school days have memories attached to them. Uh, but I'll be honest, most of the love songs I used to listen to uh, were all about being impatient and being reckless and uh, really not a whole lot of wisdom to be found in most of them. But this love song is written with great godly wisdom. I'm a parent and some of you are parents and you've probably told your children something along the lines of, uh, hey, your, your hands are for holding crayons, not for hitting somebody. Uh, your teeth are for chewing, not for biting. And maybe you've even said your heart is for loving somebody, not for hating them. And the word of God teaches us that our lives are made for sharing with others, not for hoarding them to ourselves. And that's why healthy relationships matter. And that's why Solomon wrote this book. In this beautiful book written by Solomon, we see the importance of making quality investments in relationships and treating relationships with honor and treating relationships with respect. And as a result, we grow in love and in the commitment to one another. Now let's look 
at chapter 2, verse 15. Uh, and we find these words written by Solomon. It says, catch for us the foxes, the little foxes that ruin the vineyards, our vineyards that are in bloom. Solomon's love poem here tells a story about his romantic relationship with a woman who would become his wife. And like other love poems, it's written with a rich blend of literal and figurative language. And interpreting parts of this poem and in the entire book of Solomon can be kind of challenging. But I think the wisest approach to interpreting this verse starts with an understanding that God's people who live according to God's wisdom actually protect their relationships with each other. And guarding relationships becomes necessary, especially when you realize that there are predators and those predators come in to destroy relationships. Even the world today is against the family unit. You can watch television and we're mocked. And even in songs today, because of bitterness and because of unresolved pain, the whole family unit, a man and a woman, it's being mocked and made fun of. And all that goes back to the devil himself who hates anything that brings God glory. And so the devil wants to send in those foxes to rob. But in the Song of Solomon, we see that the relationship between a husband and wife is susceptible to predators that, that in, in lack of better terms, basically gnaw at a couple's devotion to each other. And for that reason, a wise Christian couple makes guarding their marriage a high priority. Let's read the verse one more time. Catch for us the foxes. Notice this right here. The little foxes that ruin the vineyards, our vineyards that are in bloom. Try to get this in your mind. Picture this. A man and a woman walking through the garden, symbolizing their marriage. They soak up the beauty of the relationship, discovering each day what God has provided for them. And then one of them in this verse brings up the truth concerning little foxes. You know what, folks? We've got to be mindful of distractions. And that is what the little foxes, that's what it's referring to. Because those jokers come in to destroy. Little foxes can invade the vineyards. It's what is being pointed out. They can invade the marriage. They can invade the relationship and ruin all that was turning into true value. There's a particular possum that's been visiting our house over the last several weeks. And this little joker is sneaky because he knows we have a cat. We feed the cat. The cat does not like to be inside. The cat likes her, his food outside. So we'll put it out there. And when that cat happens to walk off the porch, maybe chasing a squirrel, that little possum has been watching and will jump on that porch and come up and get that food and be gone. It's just like a little crook. He's in and out. And you know what? The Word of God is teaching us, especially right here, like little animals, because that's what they do. That's what that possum is learning to do. It's got to feed himself. Solomon uses the illustration of little animals, little foxes, who sneak into our lives through distractions to chew up the vines, to chew up the roots. And, and sadly, the evidence of their destruction, it tends to go unnoticed at first. But by the time it becomes obvious, sometimes a lot of damage has been done. Now, what we read here today is a powerful lesson, uh, not only for marriage, but if I can take a little twist to this, but also our relationship with Jesus as well. Let me ask you something. How do we protect our relationship with our spouse and more importantly with the Lord? And I think the answer is simple. It's quality time. You know, it's more than a good night kiss. It's more than a good morning kiss with your spouse. It's the same as it's more than grabbing a quick verse while you're heading out the door uh, or each night before you turn in for bed. While God's word is powerful enough to give you some fuel, even when you just read a verse or two here and there. But honestly, it's quality time set aside on a daily basis where it's just you and God. You know, even Jesus got alone with the Father. David taught us that in the book of Psalms to get alone with God. And in, in the book of Psalm 91, or Psalm 91 chapter, he refers to that as the hiding place, as the secret place. And we're invited in our relationship with the Lord to have a secret place. And I love that so much because you know what? I can tell God anything. 
I can bring, even if I'm having a problem with somebody or with something I don't like, I don't like what's happening. I can bring that before the Lord and his love counsels me. I've even had God when I've, I came to the Lord a few years ago with somebody I was just having a hard time with. I didn't like the person, just to be honest with you. But you know what? God was able in my secret place to show me how to love that person the way he loves that person. And we eventually had a decent relationship. God can teach you how to salvage anything if you will take everything to him. And that's the most beneficial thing about a relationship with the Lord while we're still here on earth. If I will include him in my plans, in my, my, my hurts, if I will include God in my pain, in my problems, in my issues, simply make Jesus Lord of my life. Um, that means whatever I do, whatever I see, whatever I think, whatever I dream, whatever I face, I will get the most out of each experience because God does not waste a problem. He does not waste an issue. There's not one thing in your life that God says, you know what, there's nothing I can do with that. Let's throw it away. He can take everything and make something out of it. The Bible says he gives us beauty for ashes. And all we've got to do is surrender, learn to surrender and learn to talk to God, have communication with him. Just like we're talking now, just sit and talk and listen to what is word, anything you face in life can is already dealt with because most of what we face, face in life has to do with our response to emotions. God wants to teach us. He wants us to tune our heart. I'm a musician. And just like it's important for me to tune my guitar before I play it and maybe lead worship with it, it's important every morning that I tune my heart to the Lord. The song Count Your or, or Come Thou Fount from Every Every Blessing. It says, Tune my heart to sing your praise. And if I'm not in tune with God, I'm not going to be looking for him throughout the day. And I'm certainly not going to be singing his praises. So my question as we start to wrap up, how are you investing in your relationship with your spouse? How are you investing in your relationship with your family, with your kids, even your co-workers, maybe even your in-laws? If I can be honest with you, how are you investing in relationships? Again, we go back to what God told us earlier that he gave us our lives so that we can share them with others. So are you allowing little foxes to distract time between you and your spouse, between you and your family? Are you giving up what would be quality time for another wasting it? You know, uh, when all the ministers here, we, we go to the hospitals. Of course, during the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic, we've not been able to. But anytime I've gone to the hospital to pray with people, and it's someone who's close to, to leaving this world, uh, I will every now and then hear them bring up regrets, things that they wish they would have done differently. And one thing I've heard a lot, as most of the ministers here can, can agree with, is you've heard people talk about wasting time. I wished you know what, I wish I'd have spent more time doing this or, or spending time with my spouse or my kids or, or in church and involved. Uh, you know, when you graduate high school, it's funny how in retrospect, you'll, you'll have a lot of regrets. You'll have things you wished you could go back and do uh, earlier. And a personal testimony with me, I wish I hadn't gotten mad, gotten mad at the coach when I tried out for baseball at my freshman year, uh, he said I couldn't bunt very well. And I took pride, some, a prideful attitude to that. And you know what? I quit. Isn't that stupid? I never went back. And I regret that to this day because I was on a, a, a pattern there. I was doing well pitching, but I let one thing just take me out of the game. And I can never go back. I wasted an experience. And so I want to ask you today, are you putting quality time into your family? Understand that we're not promised tomorrow. Proverbs 27 says, don't brag about tomorrow because you have no idea what tomorrow is going to bring forth. And I want to encourage you today, invest in your family, invest in those that you love. And most importantly, Invest in your relationship with the Lord, your Redeemer, my Redeemer. I, I can say there have been so many things I've allowed to steal my time from God. You know, I, I love the convenience of having uh, a Bible app on my phone, but let's be honest. I'll be on Bible, uh, one of my apps, and then all of a sudden I'll get a text or, uh, or something. someone on Facebook wants to talk to me. 
Come on, you know that the devil loves to use convenience as a way of distraction. There's nothing like getting along with God and opening the word of God. I mean, the one that has actual pages and, and just turning out, uh, tuning out of the distractions and letting God speak to you. You know what? Whenever I spend time with the Lord, whenever you spend time, it will help you be better for your families. You know that? I'm more in tune with my wife when I am in tune with God. I'm a better listener for her uh, when I've spent time with the Lord. I mean, quality time of study, of meditation in his word. You know what? We make better decisions. Uh huh. I'm a better employee. I'm a better friend. I'm a better servant. Uh, whenever I have gotten alone with God and I've not allowed the little foxes to come in and steal my time with the Lord. It puts things in perspective when I read this, what the Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy, young Timothy in 2 Timothy 3.16. And this is for all of us. All scripture is breathed out. Take a breath right there. All scripture is breathed out by God, by him, not by a man. A man didn't write this. God breathed this to his prophets and to his writers over the span of 1,500 years, over 40 writers. God, God endorsed. God told them what to say. So all of it is breathed out by God. And here's the important part. It's all profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction. And I need correction daily and for training in righteousness. So time in prayer, studying God's word will help us recognize those little foxes that come in to distract. And the purpose is to ruin what we have growing in our relationship with God, first of all, and our relationship with each other. So maybe you say as we close, Kevin, I've allowed little foxes to distract me from what's really important. What do I do from here? Well, the first thing is get alone with God and repent. Seek the Lord's forgiveness. He's ready to forgive us because he knows this is going to be something we deal with every day. And that's why his grace is abundant. His grace is so rich for you and I. And I have to draw from that every day. I get alone and get alone with God today and say, Lord, I, I, I want to change. And you know what's also important to do? Seek forgiveness from others. If you know you've neglected your spouse, you've neglected your children, Get along with them. You know what, what I love so much uh, is, is when my father would get, a, get the kids into the room one day and he, he apologized for a couple of things here and there. Boy, that just connected me with him, that he was a real person. Pa moms and dads, we need to admit when we're wrong about something. Confess and say, look, uh, get rid of the prideful spirit. What will help you connect and bridge a connection with your children is when you can be real with them and say, I messed up. And so my kids hear me tell them that a whole bunch. Uh oh, I made a mistake. I was wrong about this. I told them some, my, my daughter about a, a math problem last night. I have no idea what she was doing, but I sit there and try to act like I did. And I eventually had to say, you know what? I ain't got a clue how to solve this. You're going to have to ask your teacher, let's Google something. All right. Be honest when you don't know what you're talking about. It doesn't make you look better to pretend. I mean, we look even we look ridiculous when we think we've known something and then we end up failing. Right. So from the get go, say, girl, I don't have a clue, but we're going to figure this out. Be honest with one another. So if God is speaking to your heart and you know when he is, when you need to go apologize to somebody, say, look, uh, you know what? I've not spent quality time with you. You know what kids love more than gifts? Time. Uh, I, you know, I could buy my kid, uh, my son, this or that. He loves it when we go out in the, in the garage and we're out into the uh, driveway and just shoot basketball. That I, He'll never forget that because one day I'm going to be dead and gone. And I hope he has memories, of, not of a dad that bought him things, but a dad that spent time with him. And so I want to encourage you today. Look around. Ask God to open your eyes. Are there little foxes that are distracting, stealing you at the root, stealing you at the vine, uh, what God is wanting to produce in you? I encourage you today, get along with the Lord, ask forgiveness. And as he brings people into your mind, call them, go see them, don't text them, call them. At least let them hear your voice and say, I'm sorry, I've not spent quality time with you. You know what Jesus said in Matthew 6? He said, seek first the kingdom of God his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. God is a God of 
order. And whenever I put him first, I will recognize the devil's scheme of robbing me. And I don't know about you, I've been robbed by the devil many times, and I don't want that anymore. And so God's word is a shield for us. He wants us to apply that so that we can have the abundant life and get the best experience of our walk with Christ as we continue. And I encourage you to take every day as a gift. Uh, and it, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. God's blessed you with today. If you're watching, you're listening to this, you've got another opportunity to grow in your relationship with God. Don't let the little foxes rob you. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Truth by Light. I'm Kevin Anderson, student pastor here at Parker Memorial. God bless you. We love you. See you soon.